As far as ABC sitcoms go, Boy Meets World is a legend amongst legends. The Coming of Age series, which premiered in 1993, ran for seven seasons. Unfortunately, we've lost a few members of the show's ensemble cast as time has gone on. One of the best parts of Boy Meets World was its glimpse into the Matthews family, and Rue McClanahan certainly made her mark as Corey's grandma in season one. McClanahan played the role of spunky grandmother well, although she teaches Corey a lesson about disappointment and love when she's unable to take him to a baseball game after spending quality time with his younger sister Morgan and brother Eric. The episode marked her only appearance in the show, maybe because McClanahan herself was so busy. The Oklahoma-born actor was best known for her role as Blanche Devereaux on the 80s sitcom The Golden Girls. Her flirty character scored McClanahan an Emmy in 1987 for Outstanding Leading Actress in a Comedy Series, not to mention a solid place in America's heart. She went on to appear in shows like Touched by an Angel and Sorted Lives, the series. In 2010, McClanahan sadly passed away at 76 after suffering a massive stroke. Brittany Murphy brought her unique energy to the role of Trini Topanga's zany best friend in two episodes of season three of Boy Meets World. Murphy's sparkle on the screen was undeniable, and her appearance coincided with the premiere of 1995's iconic blockbuster, Clueless. From then on, her career skyrocketed. She went on to voice Luann in animated series King of the Hill, as well as star in films like Girl Interrupted and 8 Mile. Later in her career, Murphy struggled with the superficial standards and media scrutiny placed on the appearance of women in Hollywood. In 2009, she died at the age of 32. Per ABC News, the coroner ruled it, quote, was caused by a lethal combination of pneumonia and prescription drugs. The unexpected nature of her passing sparked suspicion there might have been foul play. HBO Max's 2021 documentary, What Happened, Brittany Murphy, investigated multiple conspiracy theories. However, there's been no further information about the bright star's tragic death. Anne Haney had a short but sweet role as Mrs. Nelson in season seven's The Honeymooners. Her character befriends Corey and Topanga at a resort on their honeymoon. Her role on the show was hardly her biggest character, though. Get it in writing, kid. She portrayed the family court supervisor who puts Robin Williams to the test in Mrs. Doubtfire, as well as spots on hit shows like Cheers and Ally McBeal. According to the Los Angeles Times, Haney appeared in about 50 motion pictures and television programs over the course of her career. Given how vast her filmography is, one might assume she started in show business as a child, when in reality, she didn't begin working in Tinseltown until she was an adult. As she said in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, My husband died, my daughter went to college, the dog got fleas, and the maid quit, so I had to come to Hollywood. In 2001, she died of congestive heart failure at the age of 67. Peter Tork brought music to Boy Meets World as Topanga's father, Jedediah. In Career Day, he speaks in class about being a musical instrument maker for famous rock stars. And in Rave On, he makes a guitar at the request of Corey's mom in celebration of her and her husband's 20th anniversary. Tork was a member of the Monkees, the eponymous rock group behind the 1966 sitcom about a Beatles-esque band who tried to find their own international fame. The show got the chop after two seasons, but the group was wildly successful record sales-wise. In 2008, Tork was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer called adenoid cystic carcinoma. He candidly opened up about his health in an op-ed for the Washington Post, writing, I don't count myself as being afraid to die, but the news hit me like a fist to the chest. Tork passed away at 77 in 2019. Paul Gleason portrayed Pembroke University's Dean Borak in season five of the show. As the no-nonsense college official, he gives the two bumbling freshmen a run for their money in the episode titled, It's Not You, It's Me. In Fraternity Row, he busts Eric's fictitious fraternity Magnum Pi and got a chance to rub elbows with the Love Boats, Bernie Capel, and Ted Lang. An uptight professor character was likely a comfort zone for Gleason, who was known for his roles as the police chief in Die Hard, as well as Vice Principal Vernon in The Breakfast Club. The New Jersey-born actor's screen work also extended to television, where he had a recurring role as Dr. David Thornton on All My Children. In 2006, Gleason passed away from mesothelioma at 67 years old, according to The Telegraph. Julius Carey had two important roles on the show. In season five's Fraternity Row, he portrayed a college philosophy professor who challenges Sean to think outside the box after he sneaks into the class as a high schooler and ultimately inspires him to take his studies seriously. 
In season seven, he took on the role of Angela's father, Sergeant Alan Moore, portraying the character in both Angela's Men and Angela's Ashes, as Angela and Sean navigate changes in their relationship. According to Variety, the character actor appeared in over 100 guest roles on television shows like The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. and 227. He also portrayed Shonuff in cult martial arts comedy film The Last Dragon, a performance Screen Rant calls a truly delightful villain turn. I can't hear you. In 2008, he passed away at 56 from pancreatic cancer. Although she wasn't visible, Giselle McKenzie appeared in two episodes of Boy Meets World. In season one, she was behind the loudspeaker voice in Killer Bees and acted as the narrator of an antiquated sex education video in the episode Boy Meets Girl. The singer slash actor had quite the legendary career as well as a remarkable set of pipes. She earned the moniker of Canada's First Lady of Song, according to the Los Angeles Times, and she launched her career on 1950s musical variety show Your Hit Parade, and went on to host her own series for NBC. Mackenzie passed away in 2003, at 76 years, after being diagnosed with colon cancer, according to the Times. Her role on Boy Meets World was her last television appearance. Dick Van Patten had a short but sweet cameo in season four's You Can Go Home Again. Corey and Eric are on a brotherly road trip when Eric decides to leave his life in Philadelphia behind, leaving Corey stranded. Van Patten played a friendly, if slightly kooky, Amish farmer who offers Corey a ride in his horse-drawn carriage down to his farmhouse. Outside of Boy Meets World, Dick Van Patten was something of a television legend who started the acting grind when he was still a kid. He told Johnny Carson in 1980, I've been working since I was seven years old, and I never turned down a job. Van Patten starred as a father of eight on Eight is Enough and became a go-to actor in Mel Brooks's Cadre, working with the director on a number of projects, including Spaceballs and Robin Hood Men in Tights. He passed away at age 86 in 2015 from complications related to diabetes, according to his spokesperson. One of the classic Boy Meets World Halloween episodes was season two's Who's Afraid of Cory Wolf? In this spooky special, Eric convinces Cory he's turning into a werewolf after a wolf goes missing from a local zoo. Cory goes to a fortune teller named Madame Uspenskaya for help, played by none other than comedy icon Phyllis Diller. Diller paved the way for female comedians with her stand-up, with people calling her, quote, the wild-haired, self-deprecating queen of comedy. As she told NPR in 2005, Whatever you want to do to get a laugh, if it works, do it. Well, short of taking your clothes off. She got her start in stand-up in 37, going on to host her own variety show and appearing in shows and films like The Bold and the Beautiful, A Bug's Life, and Family Guy. According to CNN, she died peacefully in her sleep and with a smile on her face at 95 years old in 2012. Dick O'Neill played a small role in season four episode, I Ain't Gonna Spray Lettuce No More, but he set a major plot point into motion for the Matthews family. Corey's father, Alan, has grown tired with his job as a supermarket manager, while Eric is struggling with job opportunities after he wasn't accepted into college. At the suggestion of Mr. Feeney, the family goes to check out a local wilderness equipment store owned by O'Neill's character, Ed Kimball. Ed strikes up a conversation with Mrs. Matthews, confiding that he was looking to sell the business. Knowing that her husband and son are looking for a new path, Amy buys the place for them using part of Eric's college funds. You can't just do that. Can she do that? She just did. O'Neill was always a character actor, and his legendary TV career extended beyond his appearance on Boy Meets World. He starred as Chris Cagney's father, Charlie, on Cagney and Lacey, and had recurring roles in programs like MASH, Sybil, and Family Matters. On the film side of things, O'Neill's credits include The Taking of Pelham 123 and The Jerk. In 1998, just two years after his appearance on Boy Meets World, he passed away at 70 from heart failure, per the New York Times. Wax on, wax off. Pat Morita, best known for his role as Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid, portrayed a similarly sage character in season three's 19th episode, I Was a Teenage Spy. The Boy Meets World episode throws it back to the 50s after Corey, who is working on a term paper about Sputnik, is electrocuted and goes back in time. In this alternate universe, which is eerily similar to the world of Happy Days, the Matthews parents are Russian spies and Corey is forced to go on the run. He turns to the wise man, portrayed by Morita, for help and eventually wakes up back in the 90s. 
It's only fitting that Morita snagged a cameo on the quintessential 90s sitcom, considering he portrayed Arnold in Happy Days, and his role in Karate Kid, for which he scored an Oscars nod for Best Supporting Actor, had made him a recognizable face in Hollywood. Morita struggled with alcoholism later in life, as his wife Evelyn told People, recounting after his passing, quote, He said, I tried. I can't do it. I'm an addict. In 2005, he died at the age of 73. According to Variety, Morita, quote, died of kidney failure at a hospital while awaiting a transplant. Buddy Hackett shined in his Boy Meets World role in season four episode, Easy Street. It certainly seems like an easy street when Corey nabs a job at a restaurant while Sean is forced to work the freezing cold morning shift at the docks, especially when Hackett's character, Mr. Fontini, and his pal start doling out $20 tips to Corey. Of course, nothing is ever as it seems in a sitcom, and when Mr. Fontini starts requesting that Corey begin delivering mysterious unmarked envelopes, Sean realizes his best friend is running errands for a mob member. The Brooklyn-born comedian got his start performing stand-up in cabarets and small clubs in New York, according to the Chicago Tribune, before becoming a mainstay on The Tonight Show and appearing in films like The Music Man and It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. He even scored his own sitcom in the 50s called Stanley. Boy Meets World wasn't his only Disney connection either. The raunchy Joker voiced Scuttle in 1989's animated film The Little Mermaid, reprising the role for its sequel, as well as various video game spin-offs. Hackett died at age 78 in 2003 after a history of heart disease, per the New York Times. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.